Good morning, church. Good morning. The call of order will come from Psalms 100. Please repeat after me. May we draw from the Lord to the Lord. May we draw from the Lord to the Lord. All your lands. All your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us. It is he that has made us. And now we are ourselves. And now we are ourselves. We are his people. We are his people. And the sheep of this pasture. And the sheep of this pasture. Enter into this gates of thanksgiving. Enter into this gates of thanksgiving. And into his force of praise. And into his force of praise. Be thankful unto him. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. And his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity. You have blessed us to come and see another day, Lord. Lord, we ask you to just be with us as we get ready to come and worship you in songs and praise, Lord. That they go up unto you as a sweet savior. Thank you for the brothers that's, about to, that's serving today, the um, message that's about to be delivered. We just ask you to just be with us, God. Let's open up our hearts that we may sing unto you. Worship you with all our hearts. Leave at the door all the things that are going on. And just give you our full and undivided attention in this worship service. Yeah. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You deserve my worship. You deserve my worship. You deserve my worship, oh Lord. Thy hand upon the lad, neither do thy any 
thing unto him. For now I know that thou feareth God, seeing thou hast withheld, has not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by myself I have sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. Verse 18 says, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Yes. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and hearing, but most of all to the doing of his holy and divine
to show us a way. Mm -hmm. A way back to you. Okay. That he sacrificed his life. Oh. But he got up with our power. Mm. So Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for all that you do. So therefore, I rejoice and have faith that you're going to continue to fix things according to your will. To work out for our good. Because we love you, Lord. We follow you, Lord. We are obedient to your words, to everything that you do in our lives, Lord. That we have faith that it will and it must work out. So, Lord, as we continue to praise you, as we continue to go through this day, Lord, Lord, we want to just be doers of your word and not just hearers. Bless us in a mighty way, Lord. Strengthen us in such a way, Lord, that there's no doubt that you are God. That this world and who those who think they in power will know that you are God. So, Lord, I trust you. I don't care what this world says. I don't care what the power to be saved. I know who created this world. I know who created me. I know who blessed me. And I know who gives me the strength and who has everything in my good working out. So therefore, I'm going to rejoice and sit back and watch the power of the Lord work. So therefore, Lord, thank you. Because you've done so much in the Leaf family, like so much in every one of these lives. If you sit here walking, whether it's cancer, whether it's financial worry, you are in this building for a reason. So, Lord, we're going to rejoice today. And thank you today, Lord. There should not be a downhead in this building. Because if you woke up, you've been strengthened, you've been blessed. If the bill's been paid, you've been strengthened, you've been blessed. If you got just one more day, that's a reason to rejoice. So we must be happy. We got to rejoice and worship and praise because our Father is awesome. So Lord, I thank you. And all that we do, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God is God is
when he's knocking at my door, or whether or not somebody else uh, knocking scripture such as Genesis 22 and the verses following I find Moses not Moses but Abraham that and Abraham is headed over a mountain. Jehovah Jireh. And when Abraham started his trip in Genesis 22, Abraham started his trip, whether or not he knew or didn't know, that he was about to meet God. And God was about to bless his life and change his life. Those are ordinary days. You take a trip and you just take a trip to be taking a trip. And you meet somebody that you never met in your entire life. And you realize that after that inclusion, that you met someone that you never expected to meet, and they have changed your life in a way that you never expected it to be changed. Since I've been at a lot of street, church, you've changed my life in ways that I never thought about it being changed or would change. But nevertheless, you have changed me. And I just believe that I'm alive, healthy and well, that I might help change you. Brother Hart, look at Genesis 22. 11 and follow. Mm -hmm. Looking at verse number 11, this is Abraham that he's going to offer a sacrifice. He has the matches, he has the wood. He has a stud. He has the wall. But Abraham really haven't given much thought to his sacrifice. When you start ascending up that mountain of trials and tribulation, you think you have everything that you need. But once you get to the burnt offering altar, you lack something, and that is a sacrifice. The sacrifice in this case was Isaac, because God intended to change Abraham through Isaac. And when you fast and when you pray, yes. be mindful. God intends to change you. Yes. Amen. Because it's going to be you on the sacrifice 
of change. So you and I go through changes that God might change us. You wonder why you're going through this thing with this knucklehead at home? God's trying to change you. You wonder why things are not quite going well at work that you've been passed over three times? Hey, God's trying to change you. You wonder why you're still arguing with this woman that you've been arguing with for 30 years on the job. God's trying to change you. And God knew that in order to help change Abraham further, <coughs> he was going to have to deal with the son that he loved. When God gets ready to change you, he will start messing with your husband. Start messing with your wife. He will start messing with your children. He is going to start messing with your day. Abraham mounted that stairwell of service. And that stairwell of service says, if God is going to use you, if God is going to use me, we have to believe without doubting nothing. That God will provide what we need, yes. when we need it, and how long we're going to need it. Right. Amen. I don't have any complaints. Phil the other day hit my head so hard. You know, nowadays, that, you know, when I fall, uh, it's always on one. An occasion. My shoulders hit, then my head hit. And I'm trying to make sure my head didn't hit, but it just hit it anyway. And I hit my head so hard I thought it was going to pass out. I'm saying, Lord, where are you? You know I'm going to hit my head. Church that hit me here so hard, I got a hearing aid uh, in that ear. Now I say, what you say, what you say. Just to be saying it because in reality I can hear you now. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, <coughs> I hit me so hard that my, my hearing aid jumped out of my ear. And it just didn't fall in the middle of the floor. It fell behind a box. And I looked for one solid day for the hearing aid. Couldn't find it. Got mad, got upset. I said, well, I'm going to stop looking. So I called B.A. and told him to send me another. Fine, no problem. And then I go back and look. And lo and behold, Behind this box, in this <coughs> crevice, is my hearing aid. I have rejoiced. Because I can hear now. You know the uh, uh, traffic indicator? That makes that click, click sound when you turn it to the, uh, to uh, focus on the left or the right. I had never heard that in the Cadillac Auto Car, or the car I got now. I thought my ear lady put it in there and got in the car to go somewhere. I said, what is this sound? And it was the click, click, the click. I'm saying to myself, I thought it didn't work. And you know what? God's tricking in your life. God is tricking in uh, my life. All the while, you thought he didn't work. He wasn't concerned. 
as fresh as our chili. But it was. God will provide. Abraham realized that God does provide. That's why he named that mountain Jehovah Jireh. And there come time you had to go back and and name some things. <coughs> Kicking out the wolf a little bit up in age. I know she loves me. We have our argument. But she knows I love her too. And there are some things uh, I've just done on my own. Didn't ask to think about them because I didn't think it was necessary. If you love a person, don't be ashamed to show it. And I'm over seven. And I love Kenny. And you know what, church? Not ashamed to show it. I got Kenny in some places that if any other woman was interested in me, you're going to want to know what the devil's initial mean. <laughs> I'm going to tell my wife. Okay. Amen. Amen. If the initials are out front, you have, don't have to think to worry about the background. <laughs> Amen. You can't go nowhere with me <laughs> and not find Katie in the picture somewhere. Amen. And hopefully she can't go in the wear by herself. And that folk don't see me. It's often difficult to see God's plan. To see God in the think in the indecency of things happening in your life. God has made sure that when you see your clouds, when you see your rain, when you see your density, God's not lost. God is at work in your life. So whatever you're going through, whatever you will go through, God wants you to know that as surely as there is thunder, lightning, clouds, and rain, that God is at work Amen. in your life and in mine. Yes, See, you don't prepare a person for work and not put him to work. So some of these special things have been happening in your life. God has been putting you to work. God has been preparing you because God is about to put you to work in his vineyard, in his kingdom. So you wonder what all the training is about? You wonder what all the pain is about? Remember, God is able. God will provide. But the question is, to you and to me, do we, do we believe it? We cross down. We embrace our disability. Because we know the God that we serve The one that told Abraham, I will provide. And he did, but that was praying in his life. God had said, I will provide in your life, regardless of what you're going through. 
but there's going to be some pain. Amen. But the pain is not there because I don't love you. The pain is there because I love you. Amen. Many of us as young children, they like to take back. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, in the midst of that struggle, not to take a bag, we got a bag. Yeah. Uh, we smelled better, <laughs> felt better, because we were better. And that you have to understand, and I have to understand that whatever I'm going through, no matter how impossible the challenge is, God has touched our heart and he's caused us to yield his permission to his will. I had to get to the point that fashion's always been in full part. I just didn't come in and start to ask. But that's all you need. But when I got sick, I stopped fast because I would get down on my knees and couldn't get up. And then I got to think. God is all power. God knew you would get sick before you got sick. And you give everything else in your life some effort. And then you give God some effort. So when I don't feel like getting up, I get up. When I don't feel like reading, I read. When I really don't even feel like, you know, getting up and going anywhere, I go anyhow. <laughs> Some of you spot. But that's all. <laughs> hey, I'm still up. Yeah. I'm still breathing. Yeah. God is still working through me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And so I'm thankful to be alive. Yeah. Oh, because all God is saying to me, I got something for you to do. Amen. That's important to me. And that you're going to hurt a little bit in training. Oh, <laughs> but you're going to bless so many outside of training. Amen. First Corinthians, the ninth chapter. And verses 10 through uh, 9 through 10. Our text says, well, let's try to take a part of our lesson. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that tread about the corn. Does God take care of oxen? Or save he altogether for our sakes? Oh, he said, for our sake, for your sake, that we wouldn't die, that we would be assured that if God lets you plant a God, God's going to allow you to eat of that God. Amen. Amen. I believe that God is Yeah, I'll save a little money here, a little money there, because God allows me to do that. But then I realized the only reason I got them few nickels there and a few dimes there is because God has a lot. And then a need comes up, y'all can spare money. Amen. That you need something. I took on, <coughs> this is simply my faith extended to you. That people are more important than money. Did you get that? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
When people have a need, you got the money. Amen. Don't be afraid to bless them. Amen. Because whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Amen. And I made that part of my life. I got Amen. a little, uh, special fun I keep. Some come up in the family, and the family really needs it. Guess who's going to give it to the family? Amen. And you know what I found out? I get almost a priest. And God will turn around and give me a marvelous something. Amen. That money gets coming from here, from there, all those things like from everywhere. Amen. And I go in and replenish it. What for the little fun? I could be doing a little time. Okay, her son could be doing a little time. Uh, me, my daughter could be doing a little time. But you know what? They're not doing that. Amen. Because of God's grace, because of God's mercy. Amen. Because I believe that God will provide. Amen. Church started giving a little lower, and I know it. And I got $20, and I know we're just going to spend it on drinking pop. <laughs> hey, church, let me get that 20 bucks. Amen. 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 And what God's going to do? God's going. I don't know if God did something not too long ago in my life. I said, now God has blessed you with the trial that he might bless you. <coughs> not only spiritually, but physically. Mm -hmm. And I prayed. And I gave it to God. Next thing I know, somebody calling me to write me. Said, uh, Mr. Williams, <coughs> uh, your balance on your account is on plus. Hmm? Yeah. I said, well, send me the check. And the lady said, we'll do it. So you know what I'm waiting on next week? For that check to come in. So I can put it where it belongs. So that God can bless me. But also that God can bless you. Every outward thing that we experience to God's desire for us to live in godliness, to live in strength, to live in power, to live in hallelujah to him. God has the provisions. If we want to ask, only believe. By the way, patient Amen. carries with it the idea of one who waits. Amen. You know why you pray for stuff and they haven't got it yet? God said you ain't waited long enough. Amen. All right? Fast and pray and whatnot you believe or not is about how long you wait. Amen. And for each one of us, God has a term that says either you're waiting long enough or you still need to wait some more. We wait on God's mercy. We wait on God's hands. We trust God in his divine power. And his divine <laughs> we abide, we live on earth in its presence. And we can't wait to die to live in eternity in his presence. Abraham believed God 
His faith was fixed on God. That God says that his faith was accounted as righteousness. The idea of righteousness means one who does right. And God allows our <coughs> fasting and prayer to define our righteousness or our unrighteousness. You find you can find a hot tail to get a person here but how long they have to wait. And whether or not their attitude changes. You know, some folks don't get their blessing, you know why? Because they can't wait. They pray for the children and they curse the children out. They pray for the husband and they cut the husband out. They pray for their own help and own their fail. Because every time God checks you out, you show you don't have faith. If I got faith that God's going to fix Kate, I'm not going to be spending time arguing with Kate. Yeah. Amen. You know why? Because arguing with her can cut her blessings off and can cut off what I'm requesting of her. Amen. Yeah. So you're praying for him, leave him alone. You're praying for him, leave him alone. You're praying for your enemy, leave him or her alone. And allow God to bless you. I reached the point in my life. And some folks are just not getting blessed. Because they're running over the blessing. Not that I'm so special. Yeah, God hears me. I thank God for that. But what I mean by being so special, uh, that God hears and does everything I request because he does. But some people don't get the blessing. The blessing stays in the mail because they still messing up with God's stuff. So I won't care to get better. And you know what? I don't mess with care. I try not to. Amen. And if I forget, she'll remind me. Hey, I might be a little slow, but I ain't dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what that means. I said, but God bless me to bless her. And what I'm trying to get you to see is. No matter what you're going through or what you will go through, you and I are like Abraham. If we trust God, God will provide. And pain will arise in our life. Sometimes through us. Because God, God will survive. You know, you can die from your blessing. If Abraham had not ascended that mountain, he would have died and not received his blessing. But we would have died and not received the blessing. <laughs> What am I saying, church? You can be in the right church at the right place, but your faith down you. Good doesn't come to you. Because though you knew that God would provide, you didn't trust God to provide. I guess I've always been a person that when trouble comes, I just don't hide. Amen. Because I know that God's going to provide, that God's going to deliver me. Something happened seven years ago. I haven't figured it, uh, this out to this day. That's when I was um, a lot younger, a lot more flexible than I uh, am these days. And I was in a tournament. Uh, and uh, 
I think it was a torment, a tournament rather, for first or second place. And I think that that day I kind of said, well, I'm going to go ahead and settle for second. Because I'm tired. And I was tired. Uh, my eyebrow was cut. You could see the flesh. Uh, but with a little effort, with a little more faith and confidence, I could have whooped that boy. I knew it. I think that he also knew it. That's the reason he was hitting me with everything you hit me with. And a man came up to me, don't know him, even to this day. See you cut. I said, yeah. Want me to fix it for you? Hmm? Fix it. Yeah, go. <coughs> Got on my head, worked on my head, prayed over my head, squeezed my head. I started to hit him. <laughs> and after it was over, I went out there and scored a good second place, but didn't make first place. And the reason I didn't make first place, because he was the wrong man to trust in for first place. If you want first place in life, you trust God. You push these has been and want to be aside. There are some churches you can attend you're not going to be built up. You're not going to be strengthened. You're going to be washed out. You're going to be tired. Some of you are close to your blessing. You know what? And some of you are just tired. I'm tired. I'm not coming to evening service. I don't need to offer that point with me. I'm just tired. I'm not giving anymore. I've given all I can get. I'm just tired. But when you die, mm -hmm. your faith gets tired. Mm -hmm. And God takes some of that tiredness and says, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And you don't get your blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, sometimes our faith to be goes against our common sense. You know, there's a miracle. Yeah. I witnessed. Yeah. Since I've been walking around, especially since I had this council thing, that I, I think that I would never have witnessed if I didn't trust that the God who provided miracles in the Old Testament is still the God of the day. God can still perform a miracle today, but I don't tell him when, I don't tell him how or how long. I just ask him. You've been asking. And you know what, church? I fall down, but I don't fall down as much as I used to. I get on my knees and pray. I can get up by myself. Amen. 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 And I forget some things yet. Man, I'm 70. Mm -hmm. What do you expect of a 70-year-old man? But you know what? It goes away, but it comes back home. If you be patient, you learn how much God Hopefully I don't make you mad, but I'm going to send you this anyway. <laughs> there are some folk that you can rush up to and hug, and they good with you. Other folk, don't you rush. If you do, I'm going to my pocket. And you're not going to like what I put on. Some of us can stand rushing. 
other of us can. I've been knowing mom a long time. She just reminds me that you got to take your time. Don't just rush up to me with anything. Let me observe you for a while. <laughs> and to make everything all right. Uh, Mom and her husband done things for me. She may not have done for you, but she's done it for me, and I know. And she did because she loved me. Amen. Amen. She don't have to tell me every day, bro, the way I love you. I know you do. I remember what you did, Queen. And sometimes you got to give people space and time to get to know them. That God might give you a blessing. Amen. With God's provision, come action. God, open up the doors of opportunity. Oh, yes. And all we have to do is walk through. Yes. God, spread the table of blessing before us. Yes. All we have to do is take and eat. Yes. God causes his foundation of life to flow towards us and in us. And all we have to do is drink of it. A God's provision, solutions to our problems are always there. All we have to do is apply and accept them. If your storehouse is full of your father's treasury, even overflowing in me, you have discovered like Abraham, the Lord will provide. Oh, yeah. The question is, are you sure? Yeah. We've heard the howling tempest in our lives, but the Lord will provide. Oh, yeah. We have witnessed demonic powers among us. But the Lord will provide. We have weathered the storms of uncertainty. But God can and will provide. We have experienced a gathering clouds of sorrow. But the Lord can and will survive. We have faced the sudden turns of the tide. Sometimes not to our favor, but in spite of our favor. We have learned the Lord <coughs> and can yes. survive. In 1 Peter 1 and verse number 4, the text said that God is not slack. God is not loose. God is not weak. He is not losing grip on our blessings. Because the Lord can and the Lord will survive. I want us to understand that as an Isaac case, God answered Abraham's question. And Isaac was provided with a blessing. God solves our problem. And others are blessed with solutions. Because the Lord will survive. The Lord heals all my hurts. Because the Lord will survive. The Lord dries my every tear. Because God can and will survive. We have a Jehovah Jabber. Because the Lord can and will. Can and 
il mio survive. So whatever you're going through, whatever you will go through, if you have trust and faith in God, God can and will survive. And survive. They have me on three different bless me that I might bless you. And if you're not a child of God, won't you come? Let God know that you love him, that you believe in him, you repent of your sin, you confess him to be the son of God. Then be baptized in water and have your sin washed away. And according to Acts 22 and 16, and now we're tired of Arise to be baptized and wash away that sin cover on the name of the Lord. Baptism has a purpose. Baptism is to save you, to wash away your sin. Church, let God save you. Let God wash away your sin. Let God provide strength. And a future behavior for you know, future blessing for you. Because you believe and you're not going to give up. That God does work. So why don't you come? As the gather has been saying this thing to save his invitation, God can. God will provide, but are you sure?